guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the footwell module on your BMW 1 Series. So this, as it shows on my FRM 2 module, we'll have to do your own research to see what model you have. It works on the E81, E82, and E88. So the two-door hatchback, the two-door coupe, and the two-door convertible, which I have here. So, let's get started. So, the battery on this one series is under the floorboard of the trunk. So, I'm just going to lift it up here. And since I do tend to open it quite a bit, I have a 10 millimeter wrench on hand, which is what we're going to use to disconnect the negative terminal here. So the FRM is located behind this panel here, so definitely going to be having to remove that. I don't think we'll have to remove that panel, but if we do, I'll also do that. And then potentially also this under panel. So, I'm sorry, I do have to overexpose this a bit, so you can see. First thing we're going to have to do is remove the hood latch release. And to do so, it's just going to be one Phillips head screw right in the middle here. And after releasing the screw, the entire lever will also come off. There we go. Now there's another Phillips head screw right underneath it. So this is a pre-LCI BMW, so 2008 to 2011, I believe. The OBD2 port is going to be right here on the side. If you have an LCI model, it'll be up here so you don't have to worry about it. But I'm just going to remove this cover. If you have anything plugged in, just going to make sure that you unplug it and make sure it is out of the way. So the side panel actually does extend a little ways under this trim piece. So to make sure we don't damage anything, I'm also going to be removing this. So all you do is just pop it up like that. And you'll see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins. Usually some get left in there, but that's all right. And now I'm also going to remove the weather stripping that goes up to there. So you're just going to pull out. This might require some force. And just peel it back up till the end of this panel. Now with all of that out of the way, the only things that are actually holding this in place are two plastic pins that go right into the metal. I believe one is about right here, and then one is back there. So what I'm going to do is just pull out, being mindful of this trunk release button, because there is wiring behind that that you're going to have to disconnect. And you can just pull down slightly. So I have my OBD2 connection unplugged. And once you've got it about this far, you'll see this trunk release button here. It's going to unplug the connection like that. And then this will slide out. You'll see there's one pin there. Mine, again, got stuck back in there, but there's another one there. So now we can actually see our FRM module, which is this black box right here. And so next we are going to remove this kick panel. To do this, it's quite easy. There's just going to be a T20 there, there, and there. Alright, so you're just going to pull this out. And then this port will come with it. All right, now we can drop the panel. All right, so there's a few things that we need to unplug here. One is the speaker. Comes out just like that. And then there's our footwell light. Just like so. Then these can just unclip from there. Now there's still a couple more. This one is our, I think, fiber optic cable. Then there's just a pin that we're going to have to push to the right to be able to slide this down. And finally, there's a connection up here. And there's a tab on the top left that you're going to have to push in to then be able to pull that off. That, you can then remove this kick panel. On the back here, you'll see a cool production thing. That's with a brake pedal, but even if you have an automatic car, they give you this panel with space for a clutch. So this may not be strictly necessary, but at least for the purposes of this video, I will be removing this panel here. And then slide up. And then pull out like that. And it'll come out just like that. And the FRM doesn't actually bolt in. It just slides. 
out of the bolts on either side. I'm going to see if I can just get rid of the bottom one and then simply loosen the top one because it seems pretty difficult to get out. So before removing the FRM, there are three slide lock connections. I'm going to start at the easiest one here. You just push in on the little tab there, then slide and this will pop the connector out. Just like that. And I am going to actually remove the OBD2 port as well so that the connector can be fully removed. And I'm not going to show this, but it is just two Phillips head screws. All right, so now they use these two slide locks on the back. And it's the same process, so the tab is going to be right here. Then just push the gray lever up, and it will automatically slide the connection out. So now I'm going to do the top one, and then we can remove both of them. And there you go. Then I'll just get this bottom one. Don't think the swivel bit's actually necessary because you can just kind of put the ratchet all the way up in here with an extension, but you just kind of have to move that bunch of wires out of the way. And I'm just loosening it, so I think that's all it needs, and I don't know if I'd be able to get it back on there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is pull out a bit so this kind of stud there is release from the FRM. Oh, and look at that, just slides down like so. And now it's time to check compatibility. If you get the wrong one, you may be able to code it to be correct. The main thing you need to make sure you get is the correct FRM. So there's FRM 1, 2, and 3. I think just 2 and maybe 3 come on the 1 series uh, coupe and convertible, at least in the United States. I noticed that my Windows switches aren't working, so I do need to code it. So I'm now coding the new FRM to my car with Bimmer Geeks Pro Tool. All right, now I just need to cycle my ignition. So for this video, I'm actually gonna skip doing the reassembly. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see me continue doing the reassembly or if you can do it yourself. Put that in the comments and I'll see you in the very next video.